Count on Two, live and local in the Low Country. This is News 2 Today. All eyes are on Hurricane Ian this morning. A state of emergency declared for the entire state of Florida. At least 100,000 people are under evacuation orders and more people could be told to evacuate today. Good Tuesday morning and thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm Erin Morgan and I am Octavia Mitchell. Thanks so much for starting your day off with us. It is six o'clock right now. Count on News 2 for team coverage. Lexi Moore is standing by with preparations across the low country and Megan has a look at your traffic this morning. We begin with Josh this morning, though. He is more on the impacts that we can expect from Hurricane Ian. Josh, what's it looking like right now? Well, right now we're bordering on a category four hurricane. It's just shy of that intensity as it's moving across the western tip of Cuba. And what's changed overnight? There are a few things. Let's outline that for you. You can see it did rapidly intensify overnight. Uh, it now looks like based off of the latest track from the National Hurricane Center, we're looking at a landfall of a major hurricane near Tampa early Thursday morning. Low country impacts are also becoming more clear this morning as our threat for flooding grows. That looks to be our main impact from this with a secondary risk from some strong wind gusts and isolated tornadoes. There's the hurricane overnight. You can see really a big transformation from just 24 hours ago, and it's going to be moving up into the southeastern Gulf here over the next couple of hours, and then that's when we think this becomes a category four, then turns to the northeast and begins to slowly weaken as it starts to feel some wind shear and the storm actually expands. Remember how this works. Think about a figure skater. A figure skater, when they pull their arms in really tight, it's a close circle, they spin faster. But if they start to open their arms up, the spin becomes slower, but you get a larger wind field in a hurricane. It's kind of the same kind of thought process here. And that's what's going to happen as we move toward the day tomorrow. As the storm begins to expand, the wind velocity comes down, but its reach increases. And that's why we're looking at the landfall around 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday near Tampa Bay. Then the storm will move to the northeast and then eventually turn north and pass very near us. So what does that mean for you? You. Not much has changed since yesterday, although the confidence in these impacts is beginning to grow. Clouds will increase tomorrow with rain arriving late in the day Thursday, especially Thursday night and Friday. That's going to last into early Saturday with heavy rain and flooding possible, if not likely. In fact, we are growing more concerned about significant flooding impacts along the coastline as we head toward the day on Friday. There will also be a gusty wind threat and the risk for isolated tornadoes. Out the door this morning, it's a really nice start. Most of us are in the 50s to right around 60 back inland. We're in the mid and upper 60s closer to the coastline, except around 75 on the beaches. And it's quiet, and we're hoping to keep it that way for another 48 hours before things start to go downhill later in the week. Planning it all out for you today, 67 at 9 o'clock. We'll be in the upper 70s at noontime, low 80s at 3, and upper 70s as we head towards 6 o'clock. Let's see how things are looking out on the roadways. Here's Megan Fee with Count on 2 Traffic. 